Welcome folks! Today, we're going to share with you the fascinating insights of a hedge fund maestro, Stanley Druckenmiller. He recently predicted a hard landing scenario for the US economy as interest rates keep rising. He claims we're on the brink of the largest cross-asset bubble he has ever witnessed or studied. In this video, we'll explain the evidence behind his predictions and explore his recommendations to navigate the upcoming fallout. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Druckenmiller, well, with a net worth of 10 billion and a track record of exceptional returns, he has consistently displayed a knack for making successful investment decisions. When Druckenmiller was working for Soros's Quantum Fund, he played a crucial role in the legendary shorting of the British Pound in 1992, commonly known as Black Wednesday. The trade alone earned Soros and Druckenmiller billions of dollars in profit. Later, when Druckenmiller managed his own fund, Duquesne Capital Management, he was able to achieve a staggering average annual return of 30%. That number is even higher than Warren Buffett. Without a doubt, Druckenmiller is in a league of his own. So what makes Druckenmiller believe an economic downhill will take place later this year? Well, the answer is a combination of fiscal irresponsibility and monetary overreaction. Druckenmiller has repeatedly spoken in the past about the dangers of unchecked future government spending, quoting that it is a lie and it is a fantasy to say we don't have to cut entitlements. The problem is we're either going to cut them now or we're going to cut them later, and later will be much more costly. During COVID, the government decided to spend a staggering $5 trillion on relief measures. And guess who financed a significant portion of that spending? The Federal Reserve. Accounting for a jaw-dropping 60% of the expenditure, you can see the effect this had on their balance sheet, ballooning from around $4.5 trillion to nearly $9 trillion. How did they do it? Well, by gobbling up mortgage-backed securities and U.S. treasuries left and right. Now, if we break down the government's spending, it's clear that they were far from fiscally responsible. The numbers add up to just under $5 trillion when we look at expenditures by state. The combination of this colossal fiscal stimulus and the monetary stimulus provided by the Fed, low interest rates and quantitative easing, led to some wild speculative frenzies we saw in cryptocurrency, meme stocks, and the surge in US equities. We know that Druckenmiller has been a long-time critic of the Federal Reserve's easy monetary and fiscal policy, especially in the past few years, when the economy was expanding. He once said, We basically wasted all our bullets suggesting that by keeping both fiscal and monetary policies expansive too long, policymakers have left themselves less wiggle room compared with previous economic cycles. Picture this. Jerome Powell's Fed had their foot on the gas pedal for an entire year after that massive stimulus, buying a whopping $120 billion worth of US debt every single month. And as if that wasn't enough, they kept interest rates at a mind-boggling zero. There was almost a year's time when everyone at the Fed believed that the sign of inflation was transitory. But eventually, the Federal Reserve woke up to the fact that they were wrong. And as a result, they had to slam on the brakes forcefully. In a rather panic mode, the Fed decided to raise interest rates by a staggering 5% over the span of just one year. It is like slamming your foot on the brakes while going full speed on the highway. That's the kind of jolt the US economy is in for. To Druckenmiller, the Fed's sudden tightening of monetary policy, along with some fiscal problems, is a recipe for trouble. But what exactly does Druckenmiller mean by fiscal problems? Well, let's take a look at this nifty graph from the Congressional Budget Office a nonpartisan institution in the U.S. that scrutinizes the sustainability of government spending. This graph shows you the size of the U.S. deficit as a percentage of its income or GDP. 
if the government is spending more than it's earning, it has to bridge the gap by borrowing money. And that's okay, as long as the growth of that debt doesn't outpace GDP. But here's the catch. According to projections starting from 2023, that spending income gap keeps widening, and the size of the primary deficit grows larger. While low interest rates made it somewhat manageable to service this massive US debt pile, things are about to change. As interest rates rise, it's going to get more and more expensive to pay off that debt. And guess what? That will only add to the debt pile. It's like a never-ending cycle that threatens to spiral out of control. The increasing cost of government spending is primarily driven by the aging US population, as they require more expensive medical care. To tackle this issue, the government has to consider cutting spending, raising taxes, or both. However, raising taxes can potentially hinder economic growth. Stanley Druckenmiller is concerned that excessive spending on healthcare might crowd out investments in growth-stimulating areas like infrastructure. Now, let's talk about the consequences. One immediate result of fiscal irresponsibility and asset bubbles is a weaker dollar. Druckenmiller acknowledges the immense uncertainty in the economic outlook, making accurate forecasts extremely challenging. Despite this uncertainty, he firmly believes in one high-stakes trade betting against the dollar. If Druckenmiller's prediction of a hard landing proves true, the Federal Reserve will likely cut interest rates, leading to a weakened dollar. Another concern he raises is the US weaponizing the dollar by freezing the dollar-denominated assets of Russia following its invasion of Ukraine. This action has sparked worry among other countries that their assets could be frozen if they fall afoul of US foreign policy. Some countries are even questioning the need to trade in dollars. So given all the uncertainties, Druckenmiller advises investors to be patient in the next two to three years. He said it's a challenging time to make economic forecasts and that he sees no fat pitches when it comes to offering investment ideas. His own stock portfolio is neither long nor short and he advises equity investors to be conservative for now. You're going to have unbelievable opportunities in the next couple of years, he said. There's a lot of dispersion within industries, and just make sure to preserve your capital until they present themselves. So what tactical trade opportunities does Druckenmiller see laying ahead? Well, one of them is copper, whose price tends to fall during economic downturns. There are compelling reasons to consider copper as a valuable investment. The transition to electric vehicles, the rise of renewable energies like wind power would require copper cabling, and increased government infrastructure spending during periods of weak growth all contribute to the positive demand and outlook for copper. Druckenmiller also noted that copper stockpiles over the years have shown a gradual depletion trend, which, if continued, will result in upward pressure on copper prices by the end of this year. Another asset class is housing. Druckenmiller sees potential attractiveness once the crisis subsides. Housing prices initially surged due to fiscal and monetary stimulus during the COVID-19 pandemic, but they have started to decline. However, Druckenmiller believes that there could be an opportunity in housing after the hard landing phase. Unlike the situation back in 2007 to 2008, there is a significant structural difference and imbalance that didn't exist back then. Currently, there is a significant undersupply of single-family homes, which could drive upward pressure on house prices as the Federal Reserve cuts interest rates following a hard landing scenario. Druckenmiller also sees opportunities in biotechnology and AI-related stocks. Despite recent volatility, biotechnology holds promising transformative innovations like targeted approaches in cancer treatment. And as for AI, advancements in this field present enormous opportunities. Companies like Microsoft and Nvidia have seen substantial share price growth and will remain core players in the upcoming AI transformation. 
Even with economic uncertainties, these technology firms hold a lot of potential, making them intriguing options even during a hard landing. So as we wrap up, this episode focused on Stanley Druckenmiller's investment recommendations for a hard landing in 2023. We would love to hear from you if you agree with Druckenmiller's hard landing scenario. Be sure to leave your comments down below and share your thoughts. And of course, don't miss out on our upcoming episodes by subscribing to our channel. Until next time, happy investing!